Greetings, fellow travelers of Azeroth. Prepare yourself as we set off on a journey through echoing tunnels and corridors. Join me as the lore master of this dungeon and unlock the secrets of this infamous place where the legacy of the Defias Brotherhood is etched in stone. Welcome to the heart of Westfall's darkness. Welcome to the Dead Mines. Underneath Westfall's fields and farms lies a place of obscurity and vengeful schemes, a realm known as the Dead Mines. These sprawling tunnels, cloaked beneath the surface's veil, weave an intricate web of secrets and treachery. Its entrance resides within the town of Moonbrook, while its exit leads to the western edge of Dagger Hills, overlooking the Great Sea. In an age before the Tempest of War swept across the land, the Dead Mines were known as a glittering heart of abundance, a haven of precious metals safely tucked away within the dominion of humankind. Legends spoke of these very mines being the lifeblood of Stormwind's coffers, enriching the city's vaults with the golden deposits flowing from the veins of these underground corridors. The mine's passageways are constructed from the rare whitestone oak lumber, renowned for its unmatched strength and resilience, evidence of its ability to withstand both the searing heat and the unyielding embrace of pressure. This highly sought-after wood outperformed conventional timber, becoming the backbone of the pivotal structures within these labyrinthine tunnels. Centuries passed, and a symphony of drums echoed across the land as banners unfurled like great wings in the winds of battle. The glistening dead mines, a realm brimming with life's promises, underwent an extreme transformation. It was as if the location had withdrawn itself from the world's embrace, retreating into the shadows as the storm of war raged on. The clang of pickaxes that had once harmonized with the dreams of fortune seekers fell silent, replaced by the solemn rhythm of destiny's shifting sands. Fate had darker intentions in the making. For many years after those events, the mines remained abandoned, gradually gaining a reputation as a haunted place that discouraged most from venturing into their depths. Born out of the ashes of past conflicts, the Defias Brotherhood eventually claimed the Labyrinth for their insurgent acts against Stormwind City and its leadership. Deep within the Dead Mines, their evil-minded leader, Edwin Van Cleef, collaborated with goblins to construct a fearsome Defias Juggernaut, a weapon of impending destruction. Today, this subterranean expanse is not just a theatre of the malevolent Defias Brotherhood who were once humble labourers and stonemasons, but it is also a significant chapter in the history of Azeroth. Join me as we descend into the bowels of the earth, where the winding pathways of the dead mines curve beneath Westfall's fields and reach out towards the fringes of Stranglethorn Vale. As we step into this tale of darkness and deception, the dead mines' secrets await, ready to be unveiled. But beware, for not only is this dungeon filled with traps and ruthless foes, it also holds the origins of the Defiers Brotherhood and the promise of untold treasures for those brave enough to explore its depths. Many years ago, the Stonemasons Guild was a renowned group of artisans and builders led by the skilled guildmaster Edwin Van Cleef. They were entrusted with the tasks of constructing Netherguard Keep in the Blasted Lands and rebuilding the majestic Stormwind City to its former glory after the ravages of the First War. Their craftsmanship was unparalleled, adorning the city with the grandeur of Stormwind Keep and the Cathedral of Light. As time passed, the Guild found themselves betrayed and forgotten. Despite their years of tireless dedication, their fees and salaries went unpaid. Stormwind's officials, burdened by a massive debt from expanding the kingdom's military presence, couldn't fulfill their promises. When Edwin Van Cleef dared to demand justice, the House of Nobles responded by disbanding the Stonemasons' Guild, triggering riots that claimed the life of the Queen. Fleeing the city, the Stonemasons sought refuge in the rural lands of Westfall. The memory of King Rin's anger lingered, and many were forced to remain in hiding. In desperation, the Stonemasons founded the infamous Defias Brotherhood, turning to banditry and murder to recover the gold owed to them. Under Edwin Van Cleef's leadership, the Brotherhood plotted to bring down the corrupt House of Nobles and, with it, 
Stormwind City itself. A crimson bandana concealed the lower half of his face, veiling his expressions behind an air of mystery. Behind those swathes of fabric lay a mind as shrewd as the schemes he orchestrated, keeping his intentions hidden until the right moment presented itself. At his command arose a juggernaut, a vessel destined to unleash a tide of destruction, a colossal armoured warship adorned with mighty cannons. This dread construct took shape within the mine's depths, a place whispered of as the Ironclad Cove. Now our tale takes a bold turn, leading us to the present moment. Adventurers from far and wide, drawn by whispers of hidden riches and tales of valour, converge onto Westfall. The stage is set for a journey into the heart of danger as we prepare to confront the very embodiment of the Defias threat. The river of time flowed ceaselessly, and once more, the door to the dead mines reverberated with a resounding knock, this time heralding the arrival of many a brave champion, dispatched by Marshal Gryon Stoutmantle. Their march echoes with a steadfast anthem of fearless determination, their spirits ablaze with purpose. The Defiers Brotherhood might cast a shade over Westfall's lands, but a chance to bring back peace awaits. As we venture into the labyrinth below the abandoned town of Moonbrook, Defias workers, watchmen and magicians surround us with harmful intentions. In the heat of battle, the adventurers prove their bravery, their unity a beacon that pierces through the shadows. Deeper we journey, taking in the very essence of this place. With each step, the tunnel's mouth bears witness to the explorer's unrelenting courage. Defias diggers, henchmen and conjurers emerge to test their mettle, their opposition no match for the champion's determination. Swords clash, spells crackle through the air, and shields hold strong against the underground onslaught. Even more ominous are the halls where the restless undead make their accursed abode. Skeletal miners, undead dynamiters and undead excavators, bound by chains of sorrow, wander the empty halls with ill intent for anyone daring to pass through. There, within the enshrouded twilight, Marissa Dupage, a mage ensnared by twisted fate, stands near brainwashed noble, once a member of Stormwind's very own House of Nobles, now enslaved by the Defiers' Brotherhood's grasp. A little further, our eyes fall upon Foreman Thistlenettle, a ghoul, his tale one of a valiant dwarf from the Explorers League who once led a mining company within these tunnels. Entrapped in a tragic cave-in beneath these very mines, he and his comrades find their doom, now eternally cursed to haunt these passages as restless undead, their essence forever intertwined with the pathways they once tirelessly toiled. In the distance, the entrance to the dead mines comes into view. A long and perilous underground journey stretches out before us, an uncharted path into the depths of uncertainty. For those with hearts that quiver at the thought of such danger, the wise choice is clear. They should turn back and seek refuge in the safety of Sentinel Hill. But for the rest of you, the brave and the determined, this is the moment you all have been waiting for. The opportunity to write your own destiny in the ink of courage and adventure. With each step into the unknown, your party embraces the challenge, knowing that the dead minds hold secrets, treasures and trials that test the very core of your being. And so, with hearts resolute and spirits aflame, we venture forth, for this is the time to make history. As the explorers press forward into the deeper part of the mines, they find themselves navigating narrow tunnels and dark chambers. The air grows heavy with the scent of damp earth, and echoing footsteps reverberate through the stone passages. The flickering torchlight dances eerily on the walls, casting long, frightening shadows. The journey is far from uneventful, as they clash with numerous defiers' foes, battling their way through the initial halls of the mine. The thieves and cutthroats put up a fierce resistance, but our hero's skill prevails, it is here in the early stages of the Dead Mines that the group face their first true test of strength. Amidst the eerie, dimly lit chambers, the brave adventurers come face to face with their most formidable foe yet, a hulking ogre named Rockzor. With a massive hammer in one hand, 
it quickly becomes evident that the battle against the ogre will determine their readiness to confront the darker secrets hidden within these treacherous mines. This ogre serves as a foreman of Edwin Van Cleef overseeing his construction projects. He is a formidable sentinel, guarding the door of his hideout. His authority is further bolstered by two defias watchmen, fiercely loyal to their ogre commander, standing ready to defend him to the death. The battle commences with a deafening clash of steel and a burst of spells. The ogre's strength is awe-inspiring. He deflects blows that would fell lesser creatures with ease. His skin seems impervious to harm, and even the most potent sorcery barely slows him down. As the battle rages on, the adventurers begin to notice something peculiar. Raxor, despite his immense strength, appears to be growing weary. His movements slow, and his hammer, once a deadly weapon, becomes less precise. Recognizing the opportunity, the heroes redouble their efforts. They channel their strength, targeting the ogre's vulnerable body parts. With a collective struggle, they finally bring Raxor to his knees. The battle against the ogre is a test of not only physical strength, but also strategy and determination. The brave soldiers emerge victorious, their confidence bolstered by their ability to overcome an opponent whose exceptional robustness defies that of common enemies. As they stand in the aftermath of the battle, they know that deeper challenges await them in the dead mines. Having vanquished further adversaries along their path, the champions arrive at the Mast Room. A menacing sound fills the air, an ominous, grinding roar that sends shivers down their spines. Turning a corner, the party comes face to face with the source of the noise, a contraption only heard about in whispered tales and rumours, Sneed's Shredder. This nightmarish creation confronts the group as a lumber mill on legs, a mechanical monster designed to reduce intruders into planks of wood. Atop the Shredder, Sneed himself sits, a madman wielding the controls with an evil-minded glee. Sneed is the lumbermaster under Edwin Van Cleef's command and is in charge of the goblin carvers who diligently work on crafting a mast for the juggernaut. The group realizes they cannot face this mechanical terror head-on. They need to thin the goblin ranks before challenging Sneed himself, so they set to work, eliminating every goblin and thug in their path one by one, they can't afford to leave any loose ends, for Sneed has a vile trick up his sleeve. During the fight with Sneed and his mechanical shredder, the goblin periodically unleashes a terrifying power. This dreadful ability sends the group of adventurers fleeing in random directions away from the shredder. A panicked sprint can lead them straight into a cluster of unaware goblins, and the consequences would be dire. The intense battle continues, and the courageous soldiers begin to wear the mechanical shredder down. As the shredder's productivity dwindles, its movements grow sluggish, and sparks start to fly from its damaged machinery. Then, with a cacophonous crash, the mechanical nightmare crumples to the ground, defeated. But the battle is far from over. From the wreckage of the shredder, Sneed himself emerges, his face twisted in fury. He may have lost his shredder, but he is still a formidable foe. The group of adventurers engage Sneed and he fights fiercely, but the champions are relentless. Blow after blow rains down upon him until, at last, he falls, defeated and lifeless. Travelling beyond the mast room, the expedition persists. It wasn't long before the valiant fighters threaded into the heart of the Goblin Foundry, a place alive with the forging of anchors and cannonballs for the daunting Defias Juggernaut. Within this bustling hall, Goblin craftsmen and engineers unite their skills, aided by the summoning of remote-controlled golems. At the rear of this fiery crucible, like a sinister maestro commanding his orchestra of chaos, stands Gilnid, Van Cleef's master smelter, he is a goblin of cunning and challenge, infamous far and wide for his mastery of the molten arts. Gilnid is not alone. Three comrades stand by his side, ready to defend their hall at all costs. The adventurers exchange determined glances, their hearts pounding by the knowledge that they are about to face a foe whose cunning equals his ferocity. With weapons drawn and spells at the ready, they advance, 
knowing that the battle against Gilnid and his loyal allies is a fierce combat where only the strongest will emerge victorious. Getting through the forge to reach Gilnid proves to be a trial in itself, but it is the confrontation with Gilnid himself that truly tests the fighter's mettle. The master smelter, nimble and quick, darts among the burning embers and swirling smoke, launching molten projectiles with uncanny accuracy. But these champions are not so easily deterred. They fight with a unity born of shared purpose, each member of their group showcasing their unique skills. The clash of weapons, the roar of flames and the cries of battle fill the chamber, echoing between the towering walls. One by one, Gilnid's comrades fall. In the end, it is just Gilnid standing alone amidst the fiery forge, his once cunning smile now replaced by a look of desperation. With a final, determined surge, the explorers corner Gilnid. Despite his fierce resistance, they overwhelm him, disarm the master smelter and bring him to his knees. The once challenging goblin is vanquished and his reign over the blazing crucible comes to an end. Leaving behind the forge's fiery embrace, the group approaches a locked door, their breath still heavy with the just one battle. Beyond it lies the next passage of the Dead Mines, where new challenges and secrets await their exploration. With weapons at the ready, a path leads the group to an alcove where the explorers discover a barrel of gunpowder, its contents shimmering with explosive potential. As the group advances deeper into the mine, they find themselves before another locked door, with a massive cannon positioned in front of it. With the precious gunpowder in hand, the adventurers share determined expressions, their fingers trembling with excitement. They load the cannon with care, knowing that this is the key to their progress. As they ignite the fuse, and with a deafening roar, a cannonball hurtles through the air, striking the door with immense force. The explosion is heard throughout the dead mines, and the sound reverberates in the tunnels, shaking the ground beneath and above us. As the dust settles, they stand before the breached entrance to Ironclad Cove, their path now open, but their challenges far from over. They have taken the first step into the base of Edwin Van Cleef's operations, where danger and treasure await in equal measure. Beyond the shattered entrance lies the immense Defias Juggernaut, a titanic vessel that rests in the underground harbour of the Dead Mines. A sturdy dock extends from the doorway, connecting the mines to the deck of the ship. The Juggernaut looms like a behemoth of the deep, a testament to the Defias Brotherhood's resourcefulness and ambition. Its menacing silhouette hints at untold dangers that await those who dare to board it. As the combatants step onto the dock, their resolve is clear. This has to be their gateway to the next trial, the confrontation with the notorious Mr. Smite, an elite Tauren. The fighters cautiously approach the steps leading to his immense stature, but they can't help but feel an ominous air settling around them. Mr. Smite is known for his sadistic games, a master of manipulation who delights in luring his victims into a false sense of victory. Two stealthy and formidable bodyguards stand by the Tauren side, ready to strike at a moment's notice. The party understands that these protectors have to be dealt with first, and a skilled mage among them quickly casts Polymorph, rendering the guards temporarily harmless. The battle begins in earnest, blows are exchanged, and spells are cast. The group's protected warrior, strong and resolute, takes up position, ready to confront Mr. Smite himself, while a devoted healer works tirelessly to mend their comrades' injuries, ensuring they stand strong in the face of danger. As the conflict rages on, the adventurers can feel the tension building. When the tide of battle seems to turn in the champion's favor, Mr. Smite unleashes a wicked trick, a dreaded war stomp, stunning the entire party. Even so, the heroes have come prepared. They are aware that Smite would retreat to a chest purely for show to draw his next weapon during this interruption of the combat still ahead. His arsenal is formidable, and he revels in wielding increasingly deadly weapons. The cruel thief's blade, the pain inflicting Reaver, and eventually even his own mighty hammer. 
The battle becomes a relentless dance of strategy and brute force. It is imperative that the party focuses on eliminating the stealthed bodyguards before Smite can call upon their aid. But the stomp is a constant threat and timing is crucial. As the battle reaches its climax, the warriors can feel that victory is within their grasp. Through strategy, resilience and a fair share of cunning, they face the menacing Mr. Smite and his lethal arsenal, emerging triumphant. After defeating Mr. Smite, the adventurers' senses are heightened as they assess their surroundings. Now, on the vast decks of the colossal ship, the champions begin to engage in battles against numerous pirates and bandits alike. Having triumphed over a series of enemies, the champions ascend to the ship's uppermost deck, where their ultimate challenge awaits. There, below the icy pillars that hang off the frozen ceiling, they reach the deck of the Juggernaut ship, where the notorious Captain Greenskin paces back and forth. The elite goblin is a loyal captain in the employ of Van Cleef, now standing as the last formidable obstacle in their path to claim victory over the mysterious Edwin Van Cleef himself. He bears the marks of his maritime exploits like badges of honor. As his gaze falls upon his foes, his eyes shimmer with a blend of greed and shrewdness, fixating upon them with the predatory focus of a seasoned marauder. The strategy is clear. The protector of the group positions himself firmly between Greenskin and the spellcasting members, ensuring they are out of the cleave's deadly reach. The explorers unleash their fury upon Greenskin, where deflected spells and blows of steel are making their marks on the ship's wooden deck. In a fierce battle, dodging Captain Greenskin's brutal strikes, the goblin fights valiantly. But in the end, the combatant's unwavering resolve proves stronger. With a final triumphant blow, Captain Greenskin is defeated, his body succumbing to the forces of gravity. The cacophony of battle gradually subsides, leaving behind only the echoes of their triumph and a palpable sense of relief washes over the adventurers. As they catch their breath and divide all the spoils from the goblins' loot among themselves, they realize that they are now within arm's reach of Edwin Van Cleef's very hideout. Beyond the blood-stained deck of the vanquished Greenskin, the party discovers a hidden cabin. This cabin belongs to none other than Edwin Van Cleef himself, the leader of the Defias Brotherhood. The group now stands on the precipice of their final challenge. As the adventurers approach the cabin, caution is their watchword, for they know that attacking Van Cleef will not go unanswered. With weapons drawn and hearts pounding, they make their move. Out of the darkness, an armed figure emerges, yelling with a deep and stirring voice, None may challenge the Brotherhood! His loyal defenders, two fierce defiers blackguards, unstealth from the shadows to defend their master. Yet, even the mightiest must succumb to the resolute hands of these determined champions. Some among the fighters debate the best strategy. Should they dispatch Van Cleef's guards first, or focus their relentless attacks on the mastermind himself? There are conflicting opinions, but one thing is certain, Van Cleef has to fall. As the battle rages on and Van Cleef's health dwindles away, the situation becomes even more perilous. Two additional Defiers Blackguards emerge, summoned by Van Cleef's desperation. But the warriors stand their ground, undeterred. With every strike, every spell, they inch closer to victory. Edwin Van Cleef's strength wanes and the assault finally wears him down. With a thunderous cry, he falls, defeated at last. Overcome with emotions of joy and excitement for their victory, the group wastes no time in searching Edwin Van Cleef's lifeless body. Amid the spoils of their hard-fought battle, they stumble upon an intriguing discovery, an unsent letter, meticulously sealed. Its recipient is none other than Baros Alexton, the city architect of Stormwind, stationed at City Hall in Cathedral Square. With curiosity peaking, they unravel the letter's contents, revealing words written with a sense of vengeance and retaliation to those who wronged him. 
It speaks of Van Cleef's intentions, of secrets hidden within the dead mines, and of an imminent threat to Stormwind itself. Their attention turns to the ship's deck, where the remnants of Van Cleef's loyal crew still stand guard. The champions engage them swiftly, determined to eliminate any lingering threats. Among the chaos, they come across Cookie, the ship's formidable cook, an elite murloc with a taste for battle. After a fierce struggle, they defeat the last foe of the dead mines. Among Cookie's spoils, the brave explorers find a rare companion in the form of a Siamese cat, which they are more than happy to take with them on new adventures. With Cookie slain, the adventurers descend the ship's other side. Continuing the journey, they follow the tunnel below the earth of Westfall. With every step, they draw nearer to the dungeon's exit, their victory against Van Cleef forever etching their names into the books of history. As they make their triumphant exit, the mystery of the unsent letter still lingers in their minds, a reminder that their adventures in Azeroth are far from over. Unbeknownst to the Alliance, it remained a secret that Van Cleef had a young daughter. She was present on the Juggernaut the day her father met his demise, witnessing the group execute her own father. As time moved on, Vanessa Van Cleef rose as the Defias leader. From this newfound position of power, she now orchestrates a plan to reduce Sentinel Hill, the very place from which the victors were sent to defeat her father, to ashes. Furthermore, she resurrected Edwin's initial blueprint, enlisted new workers, and revived the Juggernaut's construction. Remarkably, Cookie also survived his earlier encounter. In the wake of the previous commander's death, Cookie boldly proclaimed himself as the captain of the Defias Brotherhood's Juggernaut. While fulfilling his official duty as the head cook, any skeptics who dared challenge his captaincy found themselves enduring severe bouts of food poisoning. As we step away from these shadowed hollows, let us not forget the sacrifices made, the trials overcome, and the destiny that guided our heroes to this point. From the clandestine plots of Edwin Van Cleef to the rise of his daughter Vanessa, the dead minds have witnessed the ebb and flow of power and the indomitable will of those who dared venture into its depths. Remember the lessons learned within these minds and carry the spirit of heroism forward into the endless horizons of your own journeys. As the Law Master of the Dead Minds, I thank you for joining us on this expedition. May your future quests be as memorable as the one we've shared today.